Aloha and welcome to the Genie Show. My name is Jeannie Joseph and we have a great show for you today. I have Dennis Dunn and he's the director of the Victim Witness Kokua program which is part of the Honolulu Prosecuting Attorney's Office and they have a wonderful new program where they're bringing dogs in to help children and other witnesses who've come to testify maybe for the first time. So Dennis, thank you so much for coming down here. Oh, you're welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. So tell us, what's the official name of this program with the dog? Uh, it's called the Courthouse Dog Program. The, courthouse uh, the, dog the program. general courthouse dog program was started in the King County prosecutors in Seattle, Washington, and they came and trained us along with the Hawaii Canines for Independence on how to develop the program here. So tell us a little bit about what Pono, the dog that you work with, does and how she does it. Pono basically will sit with victims or witnesses, often children, but sometimes adults, generally those who are more traumatized about being involved with the criminal justice process and she will develop a connection with them often by having a physical connection meaning that she's sitting right there with their hand on her or her head in their lap or something like that some kind of direct physical contact have you found that the children are, are calmer when they have an animal to connect to well it's interesting because we have even had children who the parents at least have told us were a, a diagnosed as ADHD or they will describe as you know very overactive and when they get involved with Pono, they tend to be a little bit more focused. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes even to the point where the, the parents say they don't recognize the child's behavior. I know that one might think that they'd be distracted, and in some senses they are, but I think the distraction is a distraction from the, the stress and the unease with the criminal justice process or the interview process. Not really a distraction from what they're going to do. They often seem really more focused and more appropriate on many occasions. Okay, what's the youngest child you've worked with with Pono? I believe the youngest was like three years old. Wow. One of the things we've learned to do is to spend some time introducing Pono not only to the child but to the family as a whole. So if the child comes with a parent or sometimes even we've had the uh, almost the whole family, siblings and the parents come down for the interview. Um, we spend some time with each of them because the child seems to feel more at ease um, if the other members of the family are in a sense benefited by the dog too they get you know the same kind of interaction um, in the sense that it helps it seems to help calm and relax them makes them feel more at ease almost like at home especially if they have dogs at home yes yes we've done other programs on this show on working with dogs and healing and we notice that dogs are very grounding and they're very loving and they're non-judgmental you know they don't know any of the facts of the story they're not here to judge you you know they don't uh, make you right or wrong they're just here to support and love and it's just a wonderful process that's exactly right and that was what crime victims need the most anyway is unconditional support mm -hmm. um, and in a sense the dogs sometimes demonstrate to the family what that child or, or other person needs in terms of I'm there for you no matter what yes. and they feel the dogs there for them no matter what doesn't really care what they did or what their behavior was like or doesn't you know blame them for what happened to them sometimes people pick up that lesson from the the animal yes. as to how they need to behave towards that person who's been a victim right so the animals are training the people how to behave I think very <laughs> much so I mean that's my feeling yes. and I noticed that the parents will often feel more safer about the child being interviewed and in many situations the parents are reluctant especially to have the child interviewed separately by a prosecutor but they seem to feel more at ease when the dogs there. they don't feel quite like oh I, what am I doing with my child and as a parent I personally can understand people's reluctance to want to get a child involved in the criminal justice system but the first time you come in for an interview and there's a dog there I mean this seems like you know, this isn't such a bad thing after all. Now, I know Pono's a very special dog. What breed is she? She's a black lab. She is actually registered back in New Zealand where she originally came from. She has actually the full training that any assistance dog would receive that's assigned to work with a disabled person. She knows many of the same commands that all the regular assistance dogs do. And sometimes both to keep her training going and also to sort of demonstrate to the child or their family Pono's capabilities, we'll have her show off a little bit. So what might you show off? What are some of the commands you would well, show? Well, some of the things that we do is she knows how to close doors and open doors. Wow. Um, if the light switch is at the right height, she can turn lights on and off. Uh -huh. And then, of course, she'll do the regular kind of things that dogs will do. She'll roll over and shake hands and generate that real positive feeling about, oh, hey, I'm having fun with a dog. Yes. You know, so even though she's a trained service dog, she's you know, a professional dog, so to speak, she is enough of a regular dog that people feel at home and comfortable with her. 
That's great. So are there certain commands that she knows when to give love or when to sit or when to stay? Or, and she seems to be very good at staying. She'll stay put. <laughs> she was actually selected because she is a low response dog. In other words, having somebody crying, loud noises, even at home when there's thunder or lightning, other dogs barking, sirens, she doesn't react to those kind of things. And okay. that's critical that she's able to do that because when we're in a courtroom situation in particular, mm -hmm. if something happens, somebody shouts out or something or somebody you know is testifying loudly or whatever, she can't react to that. She has to just stay there and do what she's told. Mm -hmm. But she has some individual things that she will do um, basically upon, upon command aside from stay and so on. She has one that's called visit where if a person is sitting in a, in a chair uh -huh. and um, she will just put her head directly in their lap uh -huh. and will just leave it there for a time. That's, That's called a visit. That's great. And then oftentimes when we interview we'll try to do it on a couch uh -huh. and she'll be essentially lying down prone next to the child and she'll put her head in their lap and that's called cuddle. Cuddle. And when she cuddles with them uh -huh. she will sometimes stay in that position maybe even for up to an hour. Wow. <laughs> a cuddle tool. Exactly. That's and great. she's the ultimate cuddle tool. Yeah. So what is her routine like? What's her day like? Take us through the day in life of Pono. Well, like any other dog, uh, she'll go out in the yard for a while, do her business and come in. Um, sometimes we'll play fetch with the ball or the frisbee. Uh -huh. um, like to give her a little bit of exercise in the morning. If we have a chance, we'll go out for a walk. But we do walk during the day. So especially if she has an interview, I try not to uh, get her too tired out because you want to be able to give her the energy to interact with the child if she's going to be in an interview. We do extensive grooming every day, probably up to about half an hour. Wow. In part because she's in settings that are professional work settings and um, people make certain judgments based on appearance, just yes. like anything else. Yes. And just like when you go to court as a prosecutor, you better be wearing a coat and a tie. Mm -hmm. Well, Pono has to be completely groomed when she goes to court okay. so that people aren't concerned that either she's shedding fur or she does she smells a certain way or her ears aren't clean. Uh, any of those kind of things just aren't acceptable. And so she has to be carefully groomed every day before she goes to work. So how many interviews might she have in a day? We actually have a rule that no more than two interviews a day, Okay. Um, basically because it does take something out of her. Mm -hmm. You may not think about it in that way since it spends a lot of time just lying around, right. but it is clear that she takes on some of the emotion yes. that the child or other individual that she's working with yes. um, is putting out during the interview. Yes. And so we have a maximum of two interviews per day. And tell me about that, because I, I do believe that that's true, that the dogs do take on the energy and then dissipate it for the human. But how can you see that or feel that or tell that that's happening? Well, one of the best examples that I had was a situation we had. Um, it was at our district court. It was a domestic violence case. Um, but we were there for the child, but um, the mother was also testifying. Um, the mother clearly took to Pono as well as the child. Yes. Um, most of the interaction was with the child, though, and of course, the mother had asked us to specifically bring the dog to court because she felt it would really help the, her son out. Um, however, after her son testified, she had to go testify. And actually, yes. her testimony was much more difficult, a very rigorous cross-examination. And she came out of that courtroom, and you could tell that she was just she was pretty traumatized by her experience. And she got right down on the floor uh -huh. with Pono, yes. and she put her arm around Pono, and she stayed there for like five minutes. Yes. And she got up, and she said, I really needed that. Yeah. And afterwards, you could just tell Pono was like, <laughs> okay, I'm taking whatever you had, and um, you know it, it's mine now. It's gone. You don't uh -huh. have to worry about it. Yes. I've taken it on myself, and That's great. you could tell that she was tired afterwards. I mean, yes. she could actually see sort of physically tired wow. after that uh -huh. um, because she had taken on that person's cares and and worries and their concerns and basically released them. Yes, I really think that happened. It certainly happened for this this woman, she Definitely. was able to release those. She well, I think it's really women. important for people to think about emotions as energy and, and to think about caring that or not caring it, releasing it or holding it. That notion, is, I think, is an important education for everyone. And do you, do you feel that Pono is able to release it fairly quickly when she does take it on from someone else? Or? I think most of the time, one of the sort of highlights of her career so far is that we had Pono working directly in a courtroom setting with an eight-year-old girl who was testifying in a sexual assault case it involved her stepbrother, so it was a very difficult situation. Mm -hmm. She hadn't seen him since he had been removed from the home after the incident was reported. Um, she testified 
in total for almost three hours. Wow. Um, there were several breaks mm -hmm. that we had, but Pono stayed there the entire time that um, wow. the child was in there testifying. Now, Pono couldn't be observed by anyone else in the courtroom. The witness stand was set up in such a way, so she was down underneath, mm -hmm. um, but right next to the child. The only person who really could view her was the child. Okay, so that takes care of any concern about people saying, well, a child with a dog will get more sympathy because the, the jury's not seeing the dog, exactly right. the judge is not seeing the dog, the judge is aware that there's a dog there. So how has the general ambience or atmosphere of judges, other attorneys, uh, court people been to having dogs around? Is it, light, is it lightening the mood? Is it making people I, nice? <laughs> I think it does. And of course, I think that when the program first got started in Seattle, that's one of the things that they first observed is that the decorum and behavior of people in the courtroom really was much better when their dog was around. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've seen the same thing with people just seem to be generally more friendly. They seem to be nicer towards each other. Yes. Obviously, a courtroom is an adversary situation. The criminal cases in particular, obviously, are rather adversarial. But with Pono in there, everybody seems to relax a little bit more. You know, even if it's not a formal court setting, we're just going in and visiting the courtroom with the child, trying to set up the situation in terms of how Pono is going to be in a courtroom situation. Everyone seems to behave better. Also. I've seen when people are waiting, it's, it's a very difficult process to sit yes. and wait, especially if you have to wait all day to be able to testify in court. And I've seen people kind of come unglued that had to wait all day. Right. And of course, they have a lot of, they're nervous about testifying, they're probably missing work. It's a totally different atmosphere that people normally operate in. So people can be very out of sorts. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes when the phone is there, it just seems to smooth things out. Mm -hmm. We all just seem to be a little more relaxed. So animals can teach us how to be better humans. <laughs> I think that it really is kind of ironic. It, it's taken uh, a dog to be able to help us to humanize mm -hmm. more, more uh, correctly, I think, the criminal justice process. Yes, to realize that there are tender emotions involved and a dog can really help us realize that people do need protection, witnesses or victims going into that environment, that that can be intimidating and to recognize the reality of that, whereas I think in the past we were sort of like just, you know, well, this is what you have to do, just do it, right. kind of. This the facts, ma'am, kind yeah. of approach to uh -huh. the criminal justice process. Yeah, right. Um, so uh, she comes to work with you every day, stays the she, whole day. She does come to work with me every day. She has a little bed in my office. Uh -huh. um, she just stays there and rests while we're not working. Um, during the normal work day, um, she's not allowed to interact with most of the staff because um, we found that that can be distracting if she has interviews and going to be working if we don't maintain a fairly tight protocol as far as interaction with it. But we have situations where we will put together what we call Pono Playtime at the end of the day so that all of the um, office staff, prosecutors, the legal clerks, everybody's invited to come down and play with Pono oh. in the conference room. We take her vest off, uh -huh. um, undo her leash, and she runs around, acts just like any other dog would. She runs, chases the ball, gets down on the floor with them, um, asks, you know, what, puts her belly up, wants someone to rub her belly. I mean, she's just like any other dog during that time period. So she knows when the vest is on, she's working, she's a working dog, and that's when the vest comes off, that's she's a, a regular dog, and she can that's play like any it. other dog. Now, Pono seems to have this incredible disposition. Is that part of her breed, or is, is she exceptional in her breed? Would you say that? The well, certainly it is part of the breed. I mean, a lot of people who I've run into since I've had Pono will remark that they have a dog and how much they like their, their labs or their black labs. Um, and so I think it is part of the breed. On the other hand, Pono is exceptionally calm, um, exceptionally, like I said, will not respond to loud noises, uh, disruptions, mm -hmm. and so on. I mean, she's, she's got the perfect disposition. And I do know that Hawaii Canines for Independence spent a lot of time looking for just the right dog to get the courthouse dog program started. Wow. So is Pono the first dog in Honolulu to be? She's the first dog in Hawaii, mm -hmm. and um, quite fortunately and uh, very exciting for Pono and for me too, her, uh, one of her pups, Sadie, is now working at the Maui Prosecutor's Office. Wow. So she's got a second generation already wow. of courthouse dogs in her family. That's exciting. It is exciting. So what do you see for the future of courthouse dogs? I think in looking at the larger picture, I think there's room for us to e e have several dogs. I mean, ultimately, I think we're going to find that many, many people can benefit from having a dog available, whether it's in the courtroom, uh, whether it's in an interview. 
And then I think even more importantly, ultimately, I think oh, I want to see the dogs involved in the, um, the actual interviews that the police do or social workers do with children. Um, the forensic interviews that take place at the beginning of a case has great, great potential. So I see it as expanding too. And I think beyond just working with victims in our office, I see programs that provide services to victims of domestic violence mm -hmm. and sexual assault, for example. Oh, yeah. I think that we c I can definitely see um, dogs working with those programs too. Yes. Well, it's exciting that you're kind of blazing the trail here in Hawaii with the working dogs here in the court system. and. I want to thank you so much for being here with us today. I've been speaking with Dennis Dunn, and he's the director of the Victim Witness Kokua Program. Well, I want to thank you for being part of our audience tonight, and we're going series on animals and humans working together for greater healing. So I hope you'll tune in again to see our next show. Until then, my name is Jeannie Joseph, and you've been watching The Jeannie Show. Aloha for now.